My narrative can then be more of your narrative that you tell other people and then it kind of travels on. So, okay, so you've actually, you've actually managed to get some of that in your face. Yes. I, I that's, that's, a, that's a whole other component to it, a whole other conceptual component that I find fascinating about this particular choice of a site. Yeah. And so I, I hope you could figure out, if not here literally, Something that can that can take taken advantage of inserting yourself into, say, a retail context or just a non Yeah, well, one of these things is not like the other. You generate, yeah. you generate meaning now. Like, yep. Right? And that's that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I mean I'm not gonna lie, as far as like all the spaces here, this one was very well laid out for what I wanted because it had this this open feeling where you can you can see Jesse's work from here from gallery one and we got a lot of windows. So it kind of you know, it draws people in. But I've had some interesting reactions. I've had people say that this is an abomination of art and that I should tear it down immediately and, really? and light it up. Yes. Excellent. Yes. yes, and then and the best part is is and once again I, I'm not here to, to to further the elitist stigma that art has has kind of taken on. But I wanted to go, what's your what's your reference point? Are we simply from the standpoint of I like, I don't like? Because she was unwilling to hear the story, the narrative behind it. It was purely based upon aesthetics. And it's like art is more than just aesthetics. It's the message they're trying to get across that is going to help change your perception of the aesthetic. And when did it, she pick this? No. One? When it, she even said, I don't even read that. It's garbage to me. And I said, Really? I, and I, you know, I said, That's valid. Everyone has allowed their, their, their own vantage and viewpoint. I said, However, I feel you're shortchanging the artist by not hearing what and the narrative is. You know, there, there's, one exactly. there's one response to that kind of uh, statement Offer to sell her a sweater. Yeah, and she said, she's like, I feel like someone has left their clothes and they need to come take them. I said, well, they're pretty ratty, so if someone wants them, I'm more than willing to sell them piece by piece. Let me tell you, because I know Alexander would love the money. So, but it's once again, it's, I think it's, it's that, that idea of what a gallery is. Oh, it's meant to be pretty pictures that right. sell, you know, for whatever. The, the, the home decorator feel. It's like, no, this is art with a meaning, with a purpose and with a... With a, a, a mm -hmm. I mean, the, the artist is trying to convey some sort of message, and it's different than a seascape, landscape, bowls of fruit, because that's simply trying to convey a, a point of view. This is trying to convey an actual message, and it's it's a shame that people are are shortchanging themselves by not listening to to what that narrative might be. But it's funny, people who love this work, um, or who hate this work, will love Jesse's work because it is that 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 work on canvas that. The, the classic feel of what art should be. Um, and it's very aesthetically pleasing. So I, I think because conceptual installs like this have a hard time you know, getting across. But it's funny, the people who really are passionate about art and who have a, a strong understanding are drawn to stuff like this because it is a, a very fun way to, to get across a message that isn't quite so entertaining or, or quite so fun to hear. Um, and you know what, I, I love it just for the visual intrigue and the fact that I helped install and I think I have a special connection with the piece being here for eight hours, fitting in all those boxes. Oh, yeah. It was it was fun. I think by the end, Alex and I looked at each other like, are we nuts or, <laughs> or what's going on? But this is a very fun take on because I know he's done this particular project in the past, but it's been much more flat. Having this depth of the boxes, I think it gives it a whole new dimension and a whole new feel. That does. And it definitely fills the space very nicely. Oh, yeah. I mean, because I know there, there are more works of Jesse's, but I think with just what we have here, this fills the gallery out very nicely. So it is a, a commentary on homelessness in America. There are exactly 50 boxes on the wall. Each box corresponds to the state. Um, Alexander has drawn up a map to let you know what state fits for what box. The larger boxes are the larger states, and the smaller boxes are the smaller states. Within each box is a piece of material or clothing that has a predominant color theme. Each of those colors represents a statistic as far as homelessness within that state, and that is portrayed on the back of the takeaway. Um, the cardboard box and the clothing was chosen because it is the vernacular of homelessness. When we think of homeless people, we think of cardboard boxes and tattered rags um, a as their life. So by, by using that, it's, per it's portraying this, this idea, this concept in a visually appealing way with a material that we associate with the subject, so we can kind of connect with the, 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 the subject in which we are talking about, make it hit a little more closer to home. Um, as well as be very visually appealing with the, the depth of the different boxes and the way they're kind of fit together there. Um, I love it. I, I'm
I, I, I think I'm more proud that I was able to put this on than anything else. If I can get one person to look at, at art in a different vantage point, I feel like I've, I've done my job as a, as a project director or whatever grandiose title you wish to give me. I kind of think of myself as a steward of the arts and I'm, I'm merely here to, to help further the artist idea and their message by being the middleman. If you will, so I'm the I'm the storyteller and the artist is the author. <laughs> this work, um, this particular series is called No Ordinary Sleep. Um, the images you see here on the walls are as materials of composition. They are photography backgrounds that are screened on canvas, and the the male figures are painted in um, in a, a classic European sense, where there are, are several layers of underpaint to create that depth. That that realistic flesh feeling, if you will. Um, it, it is almost a commentary about commercial art um, by somehow, almost a riff on Thomas Kincaid, by printing an image on canvas somehow makes it more valuable, more important, more artistic, um, when realistically that isn't the case. Art is, is literally what you make it, but I think Thomas Kincaid has kind of honed that sect of, if I print something on canvas, it's automatically worth more money. Um, the, the images are, are very collage-esque, where these figures are juxtaposed on top of the photography, and they're meant to look not quite right. So from far away, the images look like they could be real, but the closer you get, and you start dissecting them, you realize they, they, they really couldn't be. These figures are occupying these uninhabitable landscapes, and they're kind of just like plopped on there, if you will. The lines are harsh. There's too many appendages, like a leg just on the corner, or, or two legs underneath the branches. Um, so the figures aren't meant to be to, to, to meld into the space. They're meant to type to, to float on top of, if you will. You know, there's there it, it's nothing. By working with a a, a, a piece of photography on the canvas, it's like you're working with less than zero because it's not like you can take the painting in any direction you want. You kind of have to make very calculated moves, um, and there's no room for error. If you make a wrong brush stroke, you have to start completely over. Um, on the flip side, the works here on the walls, the paper planes, paper frames, and paper boats are the photography that is screened on the canvas, and then the backgrounds and the figures are painted on top of them. Um, once again, the scale is meant to be off. The figures are very insect-like. Um, it's meant to have an air of fantasy, because obviously humans can't write paper sculptures down any of these particular um, venues. It's meant to have that, that, that whimsical fantasy feel, if you will. Um, and she chose this German Romanticism-esque background to kind of have, once again, that, that almost angelic feel, if you will, especially in these two paintings here with the clouds in the background. It's very, um, very powerful in the sense that it's very angelic. It's, it's like these figures floating through space in a very serene environment, if you will. The funny, interesting thing about these works is if you notice, the male figures in each one of the pieces never meet gaze with one another or with the viewer themselves. So it's like almost that sexual energy or tension is, is kind of muted because they never lock eyes. It never really is an intense moment. One is always looking away, so they never will return the gaze. As well as not being able to look at the viewer, it's blocking you out from entering into the painting. It's, it's leaving you out here in the cold. Um, so that, that's where I think it's very interesting, is that it, the, the paintings pose more questions than they answer. What is the artist trying to convey? What is she trying to tell me? I also think it's fun too, the male nude has been this almost taboo thing, however in Roman Greco times it was revered. And then the European twist came and the female nude came into power play, and now Jesse's trying to like bring back the male nude into the limelight as, a, as an acceptable, you know, source of beauty, if you will. And the homoeroticism is interesting because she is a straight female making these queer paintings. So it kind of blurs the idea of who the artist's hand is and who created the works. As well as the fun thing is some of these um, pictures are fair uh, use photography. So once again, it's blurring the line of who's the artist's hand and who isn't. You know, once again, that, that idea is that the artist's hand is the more substantial you know, contribution to a piece of art versus the found things that they, they incorporate into their pieces. So, once again, the commentary on what is fine art, what creates a piece of fine art. You know, so it's, it's very interesting that all these ideas kind of collide into this, this imagery on this plane.